Hi, Jane. Oh, good morning, Stacey. How are you? I'm good, thank you. I'm glad we finally got some rain today. Yes, it's actually raining here as well now. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Okay, Jane. Um, so I know, well, everyone knows that grass is what all horses eat, whether it's hay, grazing or other conserved forage. Um, but it is largely a mystery to a lot of us. So we're hoping that you can help shed some light um, on the different types of grass and what their benefits are. Yeah, be delighted. Sounds good to me. Perfect. So we've prepared some pictures and hopefully I'll be able to share my screen with you so we can have a look at them. Okay, can you see that one? Uh, yes, we've got a nice picture there of some Yorkshire fog growing in a field. Perfect, thank That's you. Very good. Yeah, York, Yorkshire fog is an interesting grass. It's very common, but not a lot of people know what it is. Mm. And I think it's really well named because you can see from that picture that uh, it's quite pale coloured. It's sort of a silvery grey, slight tinge of mauve to it sometimes. So it does look a little bit like a layer of mist or fog over the field and even more so uh, its leaves are slightly furry sort of velvety um, which makes it a very attractive grass but um, it's not horses favorites no I think it must feel a bit like eating cotton wool because of it being <laughs> furry it's not poisonous it doesn't do them any harm it has got a certain nutritional value they're not great and they will eat it when they've eaten everything else but it's not their favorite grass it has to be said but it's very pretty. It Runs is pretty. Too. Um, I did go out into the back of my field and, and pick some samples. So we've got some close up pictures. Um, I did take these on my white tablecloth, not my bed sheets. <laughs> <laughs> As you may think. I'm glad to hear it. <laughs> Finding grass seeds in the bed is not a pleasant experience. <laughs> Can you see that photo? Um, that one hasn't come up yet. I've still got the uh, field picture. Okay, bear with me. How's that? Oh, there we are. Yes, that's a good close-up of the seed head. And um, that one's slightly less mature, so it's still got that sort of mauve tinge to it. Yes. Um, so that will help with, with identification. Yeah. Perfect. And then this is a, a larger picture with the root as well. It's got quite a long root on it. Yes, but it's um, it's not a very vigorous root. Mm. Uh, it does survive in quite a range of conditions, and you can see its uh, leaves on there as well, towards the bottom of the stem, uh, flat sort of pointed leaves, and um, quite a sort of pale colour because of the furriness of them. Yeah, so that should help people identify them, both close up and seeing how it grows in, in a field. Oh, perfect, thank you, Jane. And then our next grass for today. Oh yes, we've got some Coxfoot here. That's that's an excellent plant, you know. It's very vigorous. It's um its American name is orchard grass, and uh, that's because it's it's very good at growing in the shade of trees. So um it's not dependent on uh, strong sunlight. It will grow in shady areas. Uh, it's a very vigorous grass and it comes back well after it's been grazed or cut. It's very nutritious and it's got these distinctive heavy seed heads which um, are supposed to resemble a, a chicken's foot, hence the name uh, Coxfoot. It's, uh, it's drought resistant, um, quite majorly so. It grows in clumps, has better roots than a lot of other grass and by forming clumps, it manages to protect a certain area of ground for itself rather than letting other plants come in. So um, yes, it's a really nice um, nice plant and jolly useful when we're getting all this dry weather. Well, <laughs> dry weather's just about finishing now, but um, it is drought resistant, it's a good plant, yeah. Uh, that makes sense because, again, I've got a close up picture here and I plucked this a particular piece of grass from under one of our big trees we've got growing so it was growing in the shade and it was very tall yeah no it's um it's a useful plant in that respect and that picture shows very clearly the heavy clumps on long thin stalks um, on the uh, seed head 
which is quite distinctive of the um, Coxfoot. To resemble? It's not, um, <laughs> no you are, there's looking more like a chicken's foot. <laughs> upside down. Yeah. That's where I get the name from. Yeah, it's, uh, it can get quite coarse. And so um, when it, if it is quite coarse and gone very tall and tough, it can be a little bit difficult for horses that are densely challenged to eat. So your older horses might not be too keen on it, but um, it's, a, it's a good forage plant and it makes nice hay as well. Oh, perfect. And I think my final photo there is with the root as well. Yeah, so you can see that's got a bit more root than the, uh, the Yorkshire fog. Mm. And um, you can see it's got quite um, broad leaves. Um, when it's when it's growing, it it can vary from light green to dark green, but it's it's always a slightly bluey colour. Um, it's not a bright emerald green like some grasses. So um, a sort of slightly duller colour is distinctive of it as well as its seed head. But yeah, I do like my coxfoot, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh perfect thank you jane you're very welcome um perhaps um perhaps next time we'll look at another couple of grasses again one that's useful and one that might be less useful and if anybody's got any questions yeah send them in perfect thanks Good. jane thank you for sharing your knowledge with us as always <laughs> oh you're welcome <laughs> got, to, got to put that botany degree to some good <laughs> absolutely all right thanks jane thanks stacy bye, bye.